Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is December the 18th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we're continuing our journey through the story of the Bible, and we have come to a very pivotal point because we see that the old world has ended and a new world has begun. Now, in recognizing this, we need to stop and consider a couple of things. First of all, let me point out that oftentimes we hear something, we hear a story so often that it loses its sting. We lose the reverence for the story. We lose the reverence for the statement. We lose the reverence for the truth. And in losing the reverence and in speaking of these Bible stories, ultimately we lose the fear that is contained within the story, the fear that we should have for a holy God. Now, when I just said the word holy, this is a clear example because we truly do not understand what the holiness of God really represents. We have become so accustomed to hearing that word. We have become so accustomed to our own natural way of life that we truly do not see how separate God is. Yet God's holiness demands that we as men leave our natural ways and we pursue his holiness. And in doing so, that means that we deny our own rights. Man's audaciousness leads him to believe that he has a right to live his own life, to make his own choices, to do things the way he wants to do. And this is why man was cast out of the garden which ultimately was the judgment of God. This is why man was rid from the face of the earth during the process of the great flood, which ultimately is the result of the judgment of God. And this is why we see throughout the history of the story of the Bible that man is constantly going to be judged for doing things his own way rather than doing things God's way. And sometimes, as you're going to see in this story in a few moments, it's even unintentional on man's part. Yet the judgment of God has to be faithful to the command of God. And it is here where we so often fail. Because we live in a state of grace, under the provision that the Lord Jesus has provided for us, we have forgotten the judgment of God, and therefore we have forgotten the fear of God. So to make my point, let's look at a couple of stories this morning. If you would, turn in your Bible to Leviticus chapter 10, and I want to look at a story about Nadab and Abihu, who were the sons of Aaron, we see in verse 1. Now, God had given very precise instructions on what the order of the priest was to be, very minute details that had to be followed to the letter of the law. And so we are told Nadab and Abihu took either of them his censer and put fire in the censer and put incense on the fire in the censer. And they offered strange fire. Now we don't know exactly what this is, but it was different than the way the Lord had told them and instructed them to do things. And so they offered strange fire before the Lord, which the Lord had commanded them not And immediately there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them on the spot, and they died before the Lord. Now, as Aaron has just watched his sons be devoured by the fire of the Lord, and he's dealing with the pain that would come from such a loss, Moses, Aaron's brother, God's spokesman, says unto Aaron, this is what the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified, or I will be kept holy, I will be kept set apart in them that come nigh unto me. And because of this, before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Why? Because he understood the judgment of the Lord had come because of the disobedience of men, his sons specifically. 
And you can imagine this caused great fear before the people, before Aaron, before Moses, in what was required in obedience unto the Lord. Now, before we move on to another story, just stop and ponder that for a moment. If you were standing in a church service and someone were to defile what has been consecrated unto the Lord, and you watch them consumed by the fire of the Lord in that very moment, would you not walk differently before the God whom you serve? Well, let's go to our second story. Again, God has given very precise instructions on how the Ark of the Covenant, his most holy vessel, is to be dealt with. Now, in our story, we're going to see that King David wants the Ark moved from the place that it is to a new location. And so we're told in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 3, that they set the Ark of God upon a new cart. They brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, harps and psalteries, timbrels, cornets and cymbals. Now when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. Now God has specifically said that this was not to be done. And if you touched what had been consecrated by God as holy, you would be stricken down. And in verse 7, because Uzzah put forth his hand unintentionally to protect the ark of God from crashing and breaking into pieces from hitting the ground, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God made him there his heir, and he died by the ark of God. So again, we see in this story the immediate judgment of God for acts of disobedience, even though unintentional. Even though in trying to do a good thing, the commandment of God was broken and therefore the judgment of God was just and severe and quick. Well, these are two stories from the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament and let's look at the book of Acts. Chapter 5, we are told there was a certain man named Ananias. His wife's name was Sapphira. Now they had sold a possession and kept back part of the price. What was taking place in the community of believers was everyone was selling what they had. They were giving it to the disciples and it was being banked and used for those who needed it most. And yet Ananias and Sapphira come before the disciples, pretend to have sold their property for one price, yet having sold it for another price, they lie to the disciples so that they can keep back part of the money for themselves. And Peter, having the truth revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, says unto Ananias in verse 3, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own power? So why have you conceived this plot in your heart? No, Ananias, you have not lied unto men, but unto God. And so again, God's judgment here is very quick, very severe, and very just. We're told in verse 5, the moment Ananias heard these words, he fell down, gave up the ghost, died, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. Why? Because they understood the holiness of God. And in seeing the holiness of God, represented through his judgment, they understood how far from that holiness they were. And they understood that if justice was going to be served, they too would be stricken dead in that very moment. For there was much about each of their lives that they had lived upon earth that deserved the judgment of God. And yet we know through the person of Jesus, the divine Son of God, that judgment is not meted out to each of us, but grace is offered. And so the point of this lesson this morning is that we really stop and consider what grace is, what Jesus has done for us, friends. For each of us deserve to be treated no differently than the people in the stories that we've read about this morning. And it's only by the grace of God that we still live and breathe. And so as we consider our story of the flood and we see the justice of God that was well deserved upon men, whose hearts are only continually evil from birth, we should offer much praise and worship unto God 
who has forgiven our sin, removed our guilt and shame, who took our punishment for the things that we have done and the things that we deserve and placed them on the back of his son. This is grace, friends. And that grace can only be appreciated when we see the holiness of God, when we see his judgment that we so surely deserve. And yet in his grace, he offers forgiveness. And it is this realization that causes us to bow so humbly before him as a holy God. And to say with Isaiah in chapter 6, verse 5, woe is me. Because Isaiah understands that he is deserving of the judgment of God, quick and severe, although just. And he says, I am a man of unclean lips. I am undone. I'm beside myself. As I see the wickedness that lies within me compared to a holy and just God. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I felt it was important to point this out this morning, friends, before we leave the story of the flood, because there may be some part of us that would say, how could a just and holy God bring such severe destruction upon earth and upon man, killing every living creature? There might even be those that would say how unfair that is. But when we see ourselves in the light of a holy God, we understand that there's nothing unjust nothing unfair about the judgment of God that has been poured out upon man through the flood, through these stories that we've read about this morning, or even through the revelation that was given unto the apostle John about the end times we are yet to face. You see, verse three of chapter six in Isaiah says that the angels cry unto one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Notice they don't say love, 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 mercy, 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 faith, faith, faith. They say holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And when Isaiah recognizing this says, woe is me, I am undone. I am of unclean lips. Notice what the message of the Lord is unto him and is unto us friends. Thine iniquity, thy guilt, thy shame is taken away, and thy sin has been purged. For Isaiah, it was through the coal. For us, friends, it's through the sacrifice that the Lord Jesus gave. All of us are worthy of the quick and severe judgment of God. And yet we can stand humbly before the Lord, knowing that that judgment has been passed from us unto his Son, our sins have been forgiven, and we should consider that very heavy upon our hearts. We owe our lives unto Jesus because he gave his life for us. Well, I pray that you will consider what we've talked about this morning, friends. I pray that you will consider the judgment that has been placed on many that have gone before you, and you are just as deserving as they were for the judgment of God. And yet here you stand in the grace of God. Oh, friends, won't you sing with great gratitude, praises, adoration, and worship before your Lord? Won't you lift holy hands in recognition that all he has done for you? I pray that you will, friends. I'm so thankful that you're again with us, and I pray the word of God will penetrate your heart, enlighten your eyes, and you will live more faithfully before him than you ever have before. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.